Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala He said that Al-Lughat al-Arabiyya min al-Din That the language of Arabic is from the religion of Al-Islam Wa fahmuha fardun wajib And understanding the, the, the Arabic language is an obligation upon every Muslim He said لِأَنَّ فَهْمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَالسُنَّةَ فَرْدٌ he said, because understanding the Qur'an and the Sunnah is an obligation. And that the only way to get to understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah is through the Arabic language. And then he mentioned a very important principle that can be used in probably just about any um, aspect of the religion. But concentrating on it here in the Arabic language, he said, وَمَا لَمْ يُتِمُّ الْوَاجِبِ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبِ And whatever does not complete something that is an obligation. If something is an obligation and it cannot be completed except by way of something else, then the something else is an obligation just like the initial obligation. So because the Quran and the Sunnah, understanding it is an obligation, and the only way to understand the Quran and the Sunnah is through the Arabic language, then that means the Arabic language is also an obligation. And this is important for many of us as Muslims because we, many of us, for those who have embraced Islam and those who are non-native Arabic speakers, uh, we've spent most of our lives uh, praying behind imams during Ramadan and Tarawih, listening to the recitation of Quran in the Salawat. And although we cry because of the beauty of the recitation, but we don't really understand what is actually being recited. And one of the ways to increase our concentration, our khushur in the prayer, as the scholars mentioned, is for us to understand what is actually being recited. How can you concentrate in the prayer if you don't understand what is exactly being said? It's very easy for your mind to drift. It's very easy for you to lose concentration and focus on something else that is of less importance than the prayer. So understanding the Quran it has many advantages. Understanding the Arabic language it has many advantages, such as conversational Arabic, meaning being able to have a hot, hold a conversation with someone who is a native speaker of the Arabic language. Uh, we find ourselves making Hajj and making Umrah multiple times throughout the years, and uh, when we reach these holy places, um, it is. Um, it is unfortunate that many of us don't know how to communicate. There's a communication barrier between us and many of the Arabs who live in those particular areas. That could be of service to us. That can be of benefit to us. Um, but there's a barrier there, a language barrier there, because we don't know Arabic and many of them don't know English. So as a result of that, we're left trying to uh, use hand motions and, you know, uh, nonverbal communication to try to get our point across. Whereas if we were to take the time out to actually learn how to put a sentence together in the Arabic language so that we can communicate with people who can speak the Arabic language, we will find that it would be such more, much more of a benefit to us. So other advantages of learning the Arabic language is learning how to have a greater appreciation for the Book of Allah. The book of Allah, the Quran, it is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah uttered these words as Allah says in the Quran, wa kallam Allahu Musa taklima, and Allah spoke directly to Prophet Moses, spoke directly to him. And one of the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he speaks, and that the Quran is his speech. The Quran is the speech of Allah. So a lot of times uh, when we recite the Quran or when we hear the Quran being recited, we are not conscious of the fact that these are the same words that were uttered by Allah, Lord of everything that exists. Al-Malik Al-Qudus, Al-Qahar, the irresistible, the powerful, the omnipresent, the omnipotent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we, we tend to lose focus on this and it creates a, a lack of appreciation for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have many reciters of the Qur'an themselves uh, that can recite the Qur'an very well, but they themselves don't understand what exactly they are reciting. And you can feel it when they recite the Qur'an because when they come to certain sections of the Qur'an that are very important, you don't hear the change in their voice because they can feel it in their hearts because they know exactly what they're saying. And this is the difference between praying behind uh, a less experienced reciter and someone who is a more experienced, more advanced, and more understanding of the Quran reciter.
Someone who understands this, the, the Quran and what he's reciting, he knows when to pause, he knows when to raise his voice, he knows when to lower his voice, he knows when to make his voice monotone, he knows when to raise his voice to the point where it begins to impact you as someone praying behind him. Um, for example, when you come to verses in the Quran, like the story of Prophet Yusuf salam, when Yusuf said, Oh my Lord, prison is more dear to me than the immorality and indecency of fornication and adultery that they call me to. He said, my Lord, prison is more dear to me. And when you get to that portion of the recitation, that should be felt. Because you have come to a very intimate part of the Qur'an that should be felt when the person is reciting. Another, uh, another point in the Qur'an is when Prophet Yunus salam, when he was trapped in the belly of the well and he called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ when he called out in the belly of the well and he said, Oh Allah, there's nothing worthy of worship except you. Indeed, I was amongst those who did wrong. And he called out that pain of being in the, the, the depths of the belly of this well. He called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a person who is an experienced reciter of the Quran, someone who knows exactly what he is saying when he's reciting, when he comes to parts of the Quran like this, very intimate details of the Quran, or very short, uh, very uh, important stories of the Quran, he can, you can feel it in his recitation because he actually knows what he's reciting. So these are just some of the advantages that come along with learning the Arabic language, inshallah ta'ala. So we're hoping that um, brothers and sisters will take advantage of this opportunity and will participate in this program and get uh, what they need so that they can understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that it should be understood.